Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So we are live for show number 124. I am Ty, aka the Flip Man, and Happy New Year. Ha ha ha. I meant to give me one of those um those um what do you call it? The blow things? Little, yeah. Yeah, little blow thing, but it's raining so bad up here. I don't like to get out in the rain. And don't like to get out in the cold. So anyway, happy new year to everyone. Uh this is show number um what is it? Show number 124. First show of the year, January 2nd, 2020. Just like that. 2020 nothing to complain about i'm sure all of us know people that are not here so um welcome aboard to show number 20 and i'll go ahead and turn it over to ap well hello everyone i see we have quite a few people that have already joined and have been waiting patiently so I want to go ahead and give a few shout outs. So happy new year, Tyrone Ligians, Calvin, DB Baker, D David G, Danny Flores, Super Bobby, Ron Jackson. Ooh, Zoe from South Kekalaki. No, that's South Carolina. Mm, yeah. Joshua from NOLA, Danny Flores. I already said, hey, but don't know where you're from. Donald Taylor, Denise Lachelle, Harold, and all the rest of you guys. Look at you from Compton. All right, guys. So you know how this works. Happy New Year. Oh. Same for no, look, what movie is that from? That is from Trading Places. Places is good. when Eddie Murphy getting on the uh train and he was acting as an African and uh he was telling the guy, you know, he was trying to fool this uh uh spy uh, detective on whatever he was, private eye, you know, he was saying happy new year. <laughs> <Ridiculous. I don't laughs> <know. I> <laughs> Look at Classy Maker from Palm Beach County, Florida. Oh, you're from Dallas, Texas, Danny. Brooklyn, New York is from where Ruby is from. Ms. Robinson is from Cali. And CC Biz representing the ATL. So you post your questions. I read the questions and Ty here will answer them. The beautiful Renikia is not with us tonight. Hopefully she will join us shortly. But we're here and we're ready to get this thing started. You got anything? No. Oh no, nah, no, nah. just uh raring to go, man. I'm I'm so glad la la time la la season is over and people are ready to get back to work. Um whew. let's get it. All right, guys. So L R has a multifamily question. How do you calculate the ARV when there is no multifamily houses around the area? Well, multifamily is just different, period. Um, you, you, you're thinking in terms of it as a house now, multifamily five units or more are considered commercial. So if you got a, a duplex, triplex or fourplex, those are income producing properties. Um, uh, but they're still going to be evaluated different than houses. Um, cause a lot of times you don't have a lot of like properties to compare to. So you're going to base it on the income that they can produce, uh, minus the repay and minus the expenses. Um, that's the way you're going to evaluate multifamily. So now you'll get into cash on cash returns or or cap rates or whatever, which, you know, they're going to be tons of information out there that you can Google or whatever. But just to answer your question, you're not going to evaluate it, evaluate those like you evaluate houses by looking at what's sold before. Now, you can't get into that if there's enough data to go by, but normally there isn't. So uh, normally most investors buy um uh, income producing pro properties based on what they are doing right now and or what they're what they possibly can do all right and instagram don't think i forgot about you guys i do see you all um slowly but surely um logging in there as well welcome and if you have not make sure you follow flip on instagram and twitter at axe flip man that is Ask Flip Man, and, and we are streaming live across Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And always, you guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button, like, and sign up for the alert so you'll be aware when we go live. Now, what's the best way to move a commercial corner lot with a house on it? And this is from Sheldon. Well... <laughs> I 
I'm going to normally treat it as as if, as if, as if it's still a house, especially as it's, if it's still surrounded by other houses. If you can give me an idea, is it is it a, a commercial lot uh, with a house on it, and there are other houses around it, or are there other actual businesses around it? What what's around it that'll factor in on you know how to handle that? Okay, this is from Mr. Ron Jackson, representing Macon, Georgia. He says, Happy New Year to Ty and everyone in attendance. His question is, how do I keep my wholesale fee hidden if the buyer wants to close with their title company? Um, well, I don't worry about it being hidden. Um, <laughs> that is that simple. You have to understand, my man. Or you you're not doing just one deal with this person, this bad buyer. Um, you want someone that wants to you to send them deals over and over again, right? So, you know, if they don't want to pay your fee, um, I normally don't want to deal with them. I got sort of caught into that uh, here recently, but it wasn't my my buyer that was bought to the table. It was another wholesaler. They uh, they 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 uh, renegotiated the price after we had agreed upon it. And I, you know, the video I just recently put up about the lockbox. That's where that came from. But you know, I still made money, but you know, I, I lost quite a bit on it. If you look at it as far as what I was going to make, which was twelve thousand, ended up only making five thousand. You know, so. Um, but that was more time sensitive and somewhat my fault because I didn't know it was a pre foreclosure from the start. I would have handled it differently anyway. So it was time sensitive and I didn't, I couldn't play around. We really got down to like two days before the auction, before it was closed or whatever. But in a nutshell, man, it, it, you're going to end up using their buyer. I mean, they're closing a attorney, a title company a lot, you know, and, you know, they know you're not doing this for free. You know, if the numbers work, that's why you promote a price. The price works for them. Most people will go with it. You know, you're going to have some people that may be a stick on it. But the great thing about it, they're not the only uh, buyer out there. And again, you don't want to deal with people that don't want you to make money. The numbers just need to work for them. And what you make should be irrelevant. OK, on Instagram, 32 Apprentice wants to know, would you pay to have a property survey to get a nine thousand dollar assignment fee in return? The buyer is not willing to pay for surveying. The house sits on 11 acres and needs to be minimized to only one acre. No question about it. You know what? What is it going? Is that nine thousand after uh, it's been surveyed or you have to pay? Uh, whatever it's going to cost to be surveyed and then whatever's left out of, I guess, your 9,000. But if you're going to make 9,000 after it's being surveyed, yeah, that's nothing to think about. Nothing to think about. Even if you had to pay 2,000 to get a survey, 7,000, nothing thinking about. You know, now if you got to pay it up front and you don't have the money, but normally what a survey will do, they just charge it to the closing and it'll just come out of your money or whatever. So there's nothing to think about, in my opinion, unless you just got other people dying to get it or whatever. So. Okay. Um, Ace um, from Instagram wants to know, Flip, can you make a lease option contract? I need one. Can I make one? I, I don't, yeah. yeah, I can make one. Um, okay. I'm going to send you over to this uh, representative I deal with Go and ahead. their name is spelled G O O G L E. There's going to be tons of op uh, contracts out there that you can use for lease option, my man. Just do your due diligence, uh, find something that you're comfortable with, and and, and use it. That's how I, the contract that everybody's thousands of people have downloaded. That's not a contract I've originally came up with. It was something I found on Google. I don't remember where because it was back in 2003. So, so uh, I say the internet it might not have been Google, but it was on the internet. I think Google was around then or whatever. So. Um, and I, it's that simple. And I've, I've I had a couple of things to it, but only a couple of things. And that's more been recent than anything. So Google is your friend, guys. Google is your friend. Like someone posted a question on uh, one of my videos today. What is earnest money? All I did is went to Google and posted what, the, you know, I can explain it, but that's the only thing you, mm. Mm, Google. <laughs> come on now. Google all time. I don't know what we did before the internet. What did we do? Uh, we communicated. We communicate now. Through, yeah, it's not personal. Is it? It's not? 
it's not. I people send pictures and videos, no, and that's no, not personal. That's random. You don't even know those people. You, how much random garbage do you? People do? go to the club. They don't know them. But at least it's you know. We used face to, to face. we used to ride we used to ride horses. Now we drive cars. So advancements, yeah, but all advancements aren't the best. It takes away well, the human aspect of it. Does it really? It does. You can meet more people I don't than know you can any ever. Of these people, I'll never meet them. That, but that doesn't mean we don't we don't have an interaction with them. This is we, this is a way of I communication. See them. Uh, well, you know, but that's the way to do that too. Okay. It just probably wouldn't be as efficient as time right now. Okay. I want to see you guys. Yeah. Time. <laughs> this question is from Facebook from Mr. Keenan. Flipman, I'm in Birmingham. Been trying to do deals for months. Any advice? I put out flyers, bandit signs, cold call, driven for dollars through Bessemer, Woodlawn, and East Lake. Just looking to acquire a deal and close one. Well, now those in the Bethlehem, Woodlawn, and East Lake are not the only areas where deals exist. So you're leaving a lot of the city, a lot of the city uh, out there. Uh, you got uh, Wow Center Point, uh, Roebuck, um, Huff, well, Huffman's and all that started together. Uh, West End, Inslee, um, Hueytown, Pleasant Grove, Fultondale, Gardendale, Forestdale, Pratt City, Hoover, Vestavia, Mountain Brook. Uh, Homewood, uh, 280, uh, what am I leaving? Irondale, Trustville, Clay, Pinson. Okay, we get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You leaving a, a lot of the market on the table. How many bandit signs are you pick, putting out? What do your bandit signs say? You know, all of, all of that factors in, my man. You know, so um, it's hard to diagnose something like that. You got to be a little bit more detailed on uh, what you, um, what, you know, how many signs you put out, how long they stay up. Um, you know, your activity, you have to be a little bit more detailed on it for me to possibly troubleshoot it right here on, on this live flipper nor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. So Traylon Martin from Houston is putting land under contract for new construction. The same as putting a house under contract. Also, could I use the same one-page contract? The one-page contract that you provide. So for 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 land? Yes. Um. No. 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 You're going to use something different. Okay. Okay. So, unthinkable QR says, "Hey, Ty. What up? I started putting up bandit signs the next of Christmas." Uh, I think the day after Christmas. Okay. And I've been getting calls. So I got a call from a guy that has three properties that's willing to sell. He wants 80,000 for all. How do I do it? What do I do? Now? Well, first of all, you have to determine if not, if, if you have a great deal or not, uh, the video that you can look up is a free deal calculator. And, um, that free, just put in, uh, do a search on YouTube for free deal calculator and flip man. And that particular video will um will go into how do you determine if you have a deal or not uh and then you want to put each one of them on their own separate contract because you may not have a buyer for all three of them um by, by the same buyer is what i'm saying so number one you need to evaluate the property to see if that eighty thousand makes them a good deal because that's what about i don't know what my math is on that what is that um 25 27 27 or so mm -hmm. uh each uh, for it. So, you know, maybe a smoking deal may not be depending on where they are. When deal, you know, if they all in the same area where the comps are the same, then that's one thing versus, um, what am I trying to say? Versus, um, uh, them not being in the same area and one deal may 80,000, it may be worth 300,000. I don't know. So you have to break them down individually to see, um, if they're actually opportunities. And as I say, you're going to use Three separate contracts is what I would recommend. All right. Instagram. Thank you all for Instagram. being live there and posting your questions. It seems like we have an ignoramus troll in there. So just ignore that guy. Um, but Brianna Marche has oh. a question. When do they announce foreclosure auctions in Birmingham? Every time I look it up, it says through the newspaper and online. But I don't think that's right. So, do we have an answer? 
Well, um, in um, in uh, well, I think I can actually show you that. Uh, give me a moment here. I'm going to put it up here in um, who who who? The Latima. What about her? He is a dude. Yeah, she. Yeah. Which right there? Yeah, that. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Highlight video. Hold on. Okay. Boom. Out of here. Out of <laughs> the park. Okay. Out of here. Okay. So, um, uh, so hold on a second. Let me pull it up right quick. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, let me share my screen here. Um, let me see, share screen, Chrome tab, prop stream, share. Okay, boom. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so uh, let me do the whole thing. So. And Brianna, I know that you are on Instagram, so hop over to YouTube, Facebook, or either just view this portion about... 22 minutes in once the show was done. So you can see yeah. how to find that information in regards to foreclosures right here in Birmingham. All right. So you do Jefferson County. Um, that's what she's um, asking about Jefferson County, Alabama. So we're going to pull up all the County properties and um, we'll go over here to uh, filters and you go over here to pre foreclosures. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to search by auction date. So we'll go from today, the second, and we'll go out to maybe um, April, right? April 2nd. So, all right. And so, boom. Um, if you want to do only single family, you go ahead and select residential and then single family. And this should pull it. So we have 148. So what you do is, so just using this property here off the top that I need to probably look up. Ooh, I'd stay there. So, yeah, it's a nice crib there. So, um, yeah, let me just look at some of the pictures here. Boom. Yes, yeah, it's, mm. yeah. Mm. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh oh something go right. Yeah, something go right. Okay, so anyway, so you go ahead to pre-foreclosure details, and right here shows you the auction date. So that auction is next Tuesday, right? That auction is next Tuesday. And you can see, um, uh, does it show the auction date here? It doesn't show it here. So we'll just pull another random one. Uh, I'll pull this one right here. Pre-foreclosure auction date. So boom, there it is. Uh, January 21st on that one. So boom. So that's how you look up uh, pre-foreclosure dates using day later. AK prop stream. So that answers your question, baby girl. Boom. Yes, classy maker. Uh Verna Stells Memphis. He just mentioned it. It's on his shirt right there. Dealulator.com. D E A. -L. Oh, I'll put it up here on the screen. Boom. There, Boom. We go. there, there, there it is. Instagram can't see that. Okay. Okay. So dealulator.com. Go in about 18. We're no, we're only 18 minutes in. Okay. 18 minutes on the uh, YouTube feed. So mm -hmm. There you have it, guys. Oh, it sure is. Wow. Googling. <laughs> okay. So hopefully that answers you, your questions there. Um, most definitely go to deal you later. If you have not, if you have not, it's the brand new year. If you're serious about this whole selling game, go to dealyoulater.com, aka prop stream. Go ahead and take advantage of the five-day free trial. It is a paid subscription service. But if you're serious about this, just as serious as you are about your Hulu and Netflix and your um, Amazon Prime subscription, this would be a good thing um, to add to your list of tools. Now, ain't that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So Nikki Realty Home Videos, you say you just did your first cold call. So congratulations. So proud of you. Hopefully it turns into something for you. I know that's scary sometimes, but it's uh, most definitely a tool again that you need to be using in wholesaling. So this is from Flute Lover. My question is, why are certain in areas, certain areas, and this is close to home. I like trying to read some of these because you can answer these most definitely no questions. But my question is, why are certain areas in Birmingham not popular 
yet they are full of tax delinquent properties. I'm speaking mainly about predominantly, <laughs> we're going to say like D communities, black communities or whatever. Yeah, we so, say black communities. I said that. I read the it's on the screen. It's on the screen. Uh, yeah, I did read it beforehand. Okay. Um, uh, it just is what it is, man. Location, location, location. Um, you know, your perception of what they are is not going, it, it may not be the perception of what investors in a the large number of investors, the one that are actually doing the buying, what their perceptions are. Now you can still find buyers for those types of properties. You just have to know how cheap you need to get them. Number one, and you have to do a little bit more, um, what they call it, uh, ground roots marketing, you know, like the video I just did last, um, a couple of days ago. Um, uh, the, the, uh, a couple of days ago, um, and uh, uh, it, it basically showed you how to, um, um, what am I saying? Oh, um, how to do some, some. Um, well, that's not the word I'm looking for, some guerrilla marketing on the street or whatever to, you know, to attract attention to properties in areas where those investors may actually, or people that invest in those areas. So, yeah, a lot of tax delinquent properties, they will be in, as he said, black communities or whatever, that that's true or, and uh it just is what it is man so there's still some opportunity there you know ain't no question about it you just have to understand your market but you're talking about birmingham specifically so you're talking about north birmingham uh kingston uh woodlawn east lake uh west end um where else uh, yeah, Inslee. I was yeah i was just talking about <laughs> parts of bessemer bessemer a little, little all over the place uh maybe even midfield fairfield parts of those and you know, there's going to be a lot of tax delinquent properties, or but I was going to again be opportunities. Um, also, um, just still boils down to the numbers. And the way I look at the tax delinquent property, some people want to try to take on those tax deeds, but you have to understand the tax laws is that there may be a level of motivation there with the seller because they haven't paid the taxes. So you want to reach out to the actual owner of the property and see if they'll sell. A lot of times they may just sell for what they own the taxes just to get that out of their names or whatever. So boom, you know, the taxes are pretty low in Alabama compared to a lot of other places around the country. So. Okay. On Instagram, Patuski, you wants to know where else can you get comps or ARVs other than sites like Zillow and Trulia? We just told you, Zillulator.com. That would be Zillulator, aka PropStream. Well, let me show them. Let me show him. Yep. All right. So um, you want to look at for comps. Now you're talking about free comps. Then, yeah, those are going to be the places you can get it from mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But uh, just using that property, uh, one of these foreclosure properties that we pulled up here, which uh, I'm sharing my screen right now. So, boom, yeah, we're good. All right. And so um, uh, what you would do is you go over here to comparables and uh, nearby listings. Now, with this particular property, it only pulled up one particular comp. Uh, for this property and it's probably because of the square footage of it um, It's such a huge property. So what I'll do is I'll do 2,500 and see if that'll change the number and it did so it gave us more comps that we look at smaller properties or whatever But uh, to answer your question, these are the actual properties that are pulled from the courthouse You can do MLS or non MLS properties. I like to do both or whatever, just whatever is sold, you know, a sale is a sale, because that's what a, an appraiser is going to look at if he can justify it or whatever. So he's trying to get it free, Zillow, uh, Realtor.com, uh, Redfin, those are going to be the free places. But if you're trying to dig deeper into the numbers, uh, dig later, aka PropStream. All right, new me 019. Yes, same thing. Do you later and prop stream. Um, do you later is just uh um, oh, well, real real. I am a reseller of prop stream. It's our version. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. so <laughs> all right. So why don't you go to do and go to the calculator? Okay, that do you later? Okay. Yeah, right. go to the do you later calculator. Uh-huh. So, guys, on do you later.com, even if you're not subscribing to the service and you're not logging in. You can find that one page contract that Ty's been using for all of his wholesaling career is plug and chug. But also there is a deal calculator free. Um, that's free that gives you the opportunity to, again, free. plug and chug your numbers. 
So you can see if you indeed have a deal. Jonathan Dunn has given us some numbers. So we're going to plug and chuck some of his. He says, Flipman, I have a four bedroom, two and a half bath, 1760 square feet. It's in North Carolina. It has a view of Grandfather Mountain, close to Appalachian State and ski resorts. The ARV is 270000 The repairs are seventy, dollars and they're asking one fourteen. dollars So our question, is that a deal? All right. All right. So, um, oh, okay. Let me move. Uh, banner is in the way. All right. Okay. All right. So, um, so what's the, um, what was the uh, ARV? Two seventy. Too thin. Too thin. And what was the what square footage? Uh, seventeen sixty. So what do you say repairs were? Repairs are seventy. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, seventy grand. Okay. Seventy grand. And so what's the price he has it on contract? One fourteen. Oh. What they want. Okay. All right. Yo, you close, man. You're close. Um, you can see the numbers. If you want to make 10, you'll be at, need to be at like 109. So I would try to, if you can possibly get them down to 100, that 114 probably will work or whatever. Um, but um, try to get them down to 100 if possible or close to it. But I, the 114 sounds like it'll work regardless if your numbers are right on old repairs and ARV is correct. So boom, there you go. All right, there you have it. Good deal. Looks like you might have a, a deal. A deal there. Um, so let's see here. Sticking with our questions. Hey Ty. I so well. Nope. Mm -mm. We already asked that question. Mm -hmm. If a contract is canceled during the inspection period, how does a seller keep the EMD, which is the earnest money deposit? If I haven't brought it to a title company yet, and this is from Stephen Carrasco, how do they keep it? Yes. And if you cancel it in uh, during the inspection period, well, you don't. They don't. Okay, but if they do, he said he hadn't took it to a title company. How okay. can they keep it if they don't have it? But what if he gave it to them? Well, you try to get it back. You got to not if you gave it to the seller. You got to try to get it back from the title company. You get it back. Okay. 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 So if you put it in the seller's hand at the time they did their contract or whatever, yeah. and the seller's like, well, you canceled, not me. Yeah. And yeah. we just hope that the seller understands and that you explain that inspection period, due diligence period, mm -hmm. um, that, hey, we can go either way right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what, Ty? I think it is better that we start just a little bit later. Guys, if you didn't notice, we started today at 630 Central Time versus 6. It gives a lot of people on the other side of the world, of the country, East Coast people, time to log on. Well, you have 231. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I appreciate I each see. and every one of them. Oh, yeah, y'all y'all kicking it. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. Our next question is going to be, should you wholesale in rural areas if the population is like 20,000? It's going to be tough. You know, it's all about numbers. Uh, they're going to be... In a, in a city of 20,000 versus uh, 200,000, and that's still just a decent number, 200,000. Um, you're going to have more people to die in a $200,000 population, which means more opportunity to use, more property owners. You're going to have more people to get divorced. You're going to have more people to lose their job or income. You're going to have more people to relocate. You're going to have more people with uh, medical bills that may make them motivated to sell a piece of real estate. So it's just a numbers game. So it, you know, it's just going to be more difficult in a town that small. So you're going to have to target something much larger. You know, hopefully it's within a within an hour of driving di distance within any direction. But uh, it's just a numbers game. The more people, the more real estate, the more opportunities for you. Your your job as a wholesaler, you're really a marketing agency. As you see right now, I have on the screen mailtoflip.com. That's just a form of marketing to generate leads. And that's your daily uh, job is to is to generate leads uh, and get your phone ringing and just let the numbers take over from there. OK, Patrice has a question. This is coming from Facebook. Do you still do commercial real estate? Do you need a real estate license to wholesale commercial properties? Can you briefly explain the process? Is it difficult? Well, yeah, um, I was you, you all can't see it in the background, but I was responding to a uh, a message from a seller that um has a seven unit apartment building not far from here in um 
I was discussing when to come see it and she was uh, uh, contacting me back to let me know to um, we need to wait until it stops raining because it's supposed to rain over the next few days, but I was going to say that anyway. So to answer your question, and no, you don't need a license to, to do commercial real estate. And this is a, was it harder? Mm, yes. Is it more difficult? Um, it's more difficult because, um, well, compared to houses, let's understand what houses, they're less complicated to put a deal together in most cases. Uh, it takes a lot of patience and more due, dil more due diligence goes into buying a piece of commercial real estate, generally speaking, not always, because you can do sometimes just as fast, depending on how attractive the deal is. But generally speaking, there are more houses, number one. You have an opportunity to deal directly with the owner in a lot of cases with houses. There's no middleman, such as a broker, an agent, or whoever, a property manager when you're dealing with commercial. But the flip side of that is it's going to be less competition, especially the way we do it as far as people that are trying to wholesale or something like that. Um, but in the paydays are going to be significantly larger in most cases. So that's the trade off, you know, bigger paydays, a little harder, less competition versus a lot of competition, faster pay, less complicated to put deals together and they can go faster, generally speaking. So it's a trade off of both, but you know, both you can make some, you know, some, some really significant livings, you know, so. All right. Natalie D has a pretty good question here. How do you know? If the owner is the owner who signs your contract, especially out of town owners, so well, how do I know I'm dealing with the right person? Well, good. That's a, that's another segue into you know what. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So, um, we'll go back over here to prop stream, aka D later, D later, aka prop stream. Mm -hmm. And just like this property right here, uh, we go over here to property details. Well, like, um, if you did a search on this property, like if you've done some drivers some for dollars and then you did a search on this particular property here, boom, there it is, the address. It pulls up to details. Mm -hmm. Spinning wheel, spinning wheel, mm -hmm. spinning wheel, spinning wheel. Mm -hmm. Stop spinning. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in a day now. So uh, let me clear all and do it this way. Let me try it again. Anyway, we might have to come back to it. Um, cause, okay, there we go. Boom. All right, so you go to here to detail. I would do that too fast. Select details, and boom, there's the property owner information right there. Uh, that's that person's name. That's where they actually live. Same as the mailing address is the same as the property address. And then you can actually look at the transaction history on the property. You can look at loan information. You can see what they paid for, when they paid for, who had it before them and so on. So all of that information is right there available to you or whatever here on Dealate AK prop stream. Now, sometimes it may be a situation like a property that um, I'm about to do a deal on right now. The sister passed and left the house to her sisters. Um, and so, but the property is still in the person that's deceased. So sometimes it just depends on the situation and you just simply ask them and say, where you uh, according to courthouse records, such and such name is on the on you know showing on the property, and they'll explain what the situation is. Sometimes it's just the system, the court out records haven't caught up with you know what's going on as far as a you know transaction that previously or just recently happened, and then sometimes somebody just simply calling for someone else or whatever. So it just depends. You, just, you know that's that's a normal question. Why is your name not on the uh, showing on uh, property uh, public records? You can just ask. Okay. Um, Quentin wants to know, I know you mentioned doing deals with no cash or credit. Do you get questions about proof of funds, letters, or earnest money before getting a contract? Is a hard money lender a good idea for newbies? And then I'm just tied into another person who wants to know, where do you get proof of funds from? So, answer. And I, and I need a banner, for, a banner for that, too. Yes, um, uh, for the I know you mentioned, do you get questions about proof of funds? Now, just understand that when you're dealing with someone that's motivated to sell a piece of real estate, proof of funds rarely comes up. The only time proof of funds come up is when you're dealing with a real estate agent that's involved. That's why I, I, I recommend, especially for newbies, to shy away from real estate agents because you have to understand how to handle them and their, and their normal process of dealing with them or whatever. So 
Um, and then as far as a hard money lender, as a wholesaler, you don't need a hard money lender. That's only needed if you're trying to buy, fix and flip or buy, fix and cash flow or rent out uh, properties. As far as proof of funds, there's a lot of services out there offer it. And I don't have a banner for it. I will next week. Uh, <laughs> but you can go to realpof.com. That's R-E-A-L-P-O-F.com. It's a service that I'm, I work with this guy on and they provide uh, proof of funds. So realpof.com. You can just do a search on uh, YouTube also and uh, see the video. But the video there on the site. So just go to realpof.com. All right, Tony Alexander, you were the one who had the question about how do I apply for the proof of funds letter. There you have it. Boom. Okay, so hopefully you heard that answer as well. Now, Michael White, another very good. Y'all are coming with some good questions tonight. Very bad to the bone. Man. Okay, should I be doing comps on all potential leads before I cold call them to have an idea of an ARV? If um, if you're doing a, a list um, of what just for driving for dollars or something like that, you may have 10 or 15. You might as well just have as much information about the property as possible because it won't take long for you to do that. But if you're uh, dialing a list with three or four hundred or thousand on it or whatever. No, you know, you just you don't you just evaluate them as they come come available to you. All right. Pup, 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 pup. I'm sure there is one. So, Ty, can you direct Pup where there's a video on how to pull comps on PropStream? Uh, yeah, there, there are going to be several of them. If um, once uh, if you go to dealer.com, there should be a video there. But if you just go to uh, YouTube and do a search for Dealer Later, there are going to just be tons of videos there. Now, I understand that they've done some updates to the just the the, the the look and feel of the site or whatever. But generally speaking, it's still the same or whatever um on it so and then the video the, oh i know the video you should look up look up free deal calculator and um um free deal calculator and flip man and that video there i sort of dive into it quite a bit so okay so this is from truth mom and maybe you can give some advice on this he says peace flip man i paid for a quote unquote mentor and feel like this person took my money and doesn't know anything. What can I do to get my money back? Thanks. Wow, man. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, how did you pay? Did you pay cash or how long has it been? All of that a factor in. If you pay with a debit or credit card, um, people do it to me, dispute the charge. <laughs> Not encouraging people to do that. <laughs> but um, but that that's how you get your money back, my man. So okay all right so on instagram tyron says that title companies that's a great name tyron i do i do like that how do you spell it how else do people spell tyron i thought you said tyron no oh i see that's a spin tyron no. see my, my great aunt when she bless her soul she uh, rest in peace and she used to say tyron uh, <laughs> <Tyrone. see? laughs> <laughs> no, this is, no, this is Tyrone. Um, title companies in my area are moving away from double closings. Can you recommend a workaround or suggestions to solve this problem? Um, just do an assignment. Just do an assignment of contract. And when you say title companies are 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 moving away from it, how many? What city are you in? Well, who are you talking about particularly? How many are we saying three or four or we're saying 30 or 40 depending on the size of the city or whatever. So, and, and, and hopefully this is from your experience and you're not listening to someone. Okay. So Deontay wants to know, how do you deal with cities that have points of sale? Can that stop your deal? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know what that means. Tell me what that means. I'm not sure what that means. I think I do, but to tell them to, to define that point of sale. Deontay, what does point of sale mean? Okay. Um, so speaking on title companies, Joshua wants to know what's the best way to vet a title company or attorney if I'm virtual wholesaling in another state? Well, again, I'm going to always side on whether you're wholesaling locally or wholesaling um, um, uh, in another state or city or whatever. Um <laughs> You don't even worry about that part of it because your buyer may dictate that at the end of the day. So wait till you get your buyer to who they deal with or want to deal with 
or whatever. And then you go from there and try, you know, from that point, explain to them what you're uh, looking for as far as being able to close the deal. Because you can have all that set up and your buyer didn't want to use them. So just wait on your buyer and then just work through it. All right. God's Energy on Instagram says he's closed on multiple RE wholesale deals because of everything you have taught in your courses. Thanks, Flipman. Muscle shoulder, muscle shoulder. Way to go, God's Energy. Love to hear good, positive comments like that. And for those of you who are just joining us or who have been with us for a while, it's a new year. It's time to get started. Figure out your plan. Get you a nice little planner, calendar, um, little task software it's time to make that money honey stack q i haven't seen you in a while where you been yeah but he says i have two vacant properties that i can't find the owners to i have skip trace call text voicemail and email is there any other suggestions that you have did he say mail in there i don't see mail in there mm, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give him a bit of a doubt he ain't a newbie we i'm gonna give him mail too yeah um if you haven't done mail, you know, you want to do mail. If and he say he's trying to find how many owners? Now, he didn't say how many. He just says he can't find. So I well for one, I hope you're not putting all that energy into one deal, but he says two vacant properties. Yeah, two vacant properties. Okay, yeah. I will send them a letter by FedEx or UPS. Okay. After that. Well, he's done everything else. Uh, I would well, not everything, but I would go speak to the neighbors, see if they know how to reach them, give them some incentive to give the owner your number, maybe $500 or $1,000 if you close on it or whatever. And um, you could possibly try to skip trace, look for relatives. A good service you can use for that is Intellus.com. Intellus, I-N-T-E-L-I-U-S.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, Deontay responded and he said, a point of sale inspection by the city he wants to know, can that stop your deal? Buyers in my area won't deal with that. So the city comes in and does some tours. Yeah, okay. They, that, that's what I thought it was. It was in Ohio. Okay. No, it's just normal business or whatever. Um, some buyers won't do it, won't fool with it, some some will, but that's normal business in that market. The city comes in, do an inspection and say this is what it's gonna cost to fix it. So and um there's normal business. That's that's the market. That's that's Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> KS and from Instagram says he's done about four deals. Awesome. But he wants to know what's your advice on being more transparent. So what is it that you wanting to be more transparent about KS? Yeah. If, if you could be a little bit more clear on as far as transparent, what, what, what do you mean? I don't know. Do you think, I don't know. I'm just assuming that maybe it's the gator in him is kind of like, Ooh. yeah, what? First of all, I'm not the one that's not gator. I'm gator. Her being gator, okay. like the Ali alligator. First of all, and gators don't growl. Did I just growl? <laughs> no, nah, I think they. Well, no, they probably really don't. They, <laughs> they just like moan. Snap. They like moan, don't they? Yeah, they don't growl. Yeah, no, they don't do that. I don't know what sound kind of gator make. Gator make <clears throat> no, they, man, I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> okay, so David Myers explained even further. Mm. Point of sale is when we look close to the mic. Pull it, just pull it to you. I'm fine. Anybody complaining? Okay, all right. All I'm right. good. Can y'all hear me just fine? Well, now. Yeah, well, of course they can. Mm -hmm. So, point of sale is when the city requires the owner to have an inspection of the house before the house is sold. The buyer will have to assume repairs conducted in a specified time frame after closing. Oh, that's, that's business in Cleveland. Okay, okay. I bet you found that on Google too, didn't you, Dave? <laughs> sure did. <laughs> and that looks really... Really crisp. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Hell, might, they might have did it. Hey, <laughs> looks really crisp. Speaking of inspections and repairs, Ajuli wants to know who pays for the inspection once you get the contract signed. Well, a lot of buyers that you'll deal with, they, they're experienced buyers and they don't get an inspection. But if it is an inspection needed, it's on the buyer. That's them. That's, that's their thing. They're the one that's going to take on that take on that property or, or take on that opportunity. So it's going to be up to them how, how deep they want to go into um, uh, whether they need an inspection or not. So. Thank you, Miss Mickey. I knew you could hear me and just mm -hmm, thanks. Okay. So 
He did not Google it. He works for the city, so that was straight off the dome. He probably did. Well, I, 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 yeah, David. Uh, what? This David, right? Yeah, this David. Well, well, yeah. On top of that, David, then is that for all properties? Any any property that's being sold, the, the POS has to be performed in Cleveland. I think that's the way it is, or just certain areas of town, or whatever. Or uh, what what identifies a certain property? If you could be a little bit more clear on that, or just just all property. All right, David, we're asking you questions. Do you have an yeah. answer? Please post. New flip man, David. David. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Goodwin says if a distressed property has stickers on the door from the city and documents taped to the window, can you still wholesale these properties? Thanks for all that you do, King. King Ty. Can you like still the hood, wholesale these Like properties. the HUD notes. Yeah, 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 you can. The most definitely. You know, they just, there may be a fee. You know, that's, that may be a lien that the city has applied to the property, but at the end of the day, it's still just the numbers have to work. Okay. You know, the owner still owns the property, if it's what I'm talking if, if I'm understanding the question, right? Mm -hmm. It just, you know, say if the stress property has a stick on the door from the city and documents taped to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, it just may say, hey, the grass is too high, this property is, is, is too, um, needs too many repairs, where you're in violation of code 6297342189 or whatever and so they just attach a lien to it or whatever i know in birmingham <laughs> uh they have to cut the grass i, I know it used to be maybe a lot more than that it was a thousand dollars you know what Woo! i'm saying they have to cut the grass well go get you a goat a thousand dollars is a nice ride long or either you yeah. know a couple of heads of goat mm -hmm. throw it on the grill like okay. that okay so oh Oh, Hodge Malik, where you been? Um, hey, everybody better not there in La La Land, man. I see you know everybody showing back. Nah, he's doing deals. He, he was on a couple right, of weeks right, ago. Right. That's La La Land, too, <laughs> with the payday, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, so how do you weed out, and this is from Robin, how do you weed out wholesalers claiming to be cash buyers quickly? Oh, it's just, it's just easy to come out. Um, and it's cool if they can perform, but I'm not going to, I'm going to treat them just like a cash buyer. You know, I'm only going to give them 10 days or so to close. I want 500 to to $1,000 earnest money. Then they're going to have to let me know. So, well, I ain't got that. I can't do that. Blah. Okay. Well, well, let's talk, you know, but I'm not going to let you tie up my property unless this, this, that happens or whatever. So normally wholesalers are going to talk in terms the same way you do 30 days. They're not going to want to put up a lot of earnest money, if any. You know, so, you know, you you just, it'll be clear as a bell in most cases that you're dealing with another wholesale, but it's fine again, as long as they can perform. Okay. So with everybody possibly trying to start new and fresh at the beginning of the year, this question always comes up and this is Michael. Do you think it's strategic to form an LLC before we start marketing? Well, I, I base that on you run you running a business, so at some point you need to, to establish an, an actual business entity and an LLC is a common entity. Most people start, um, especially with this or whatever. But if it's a decision you got to you don't have a, a budget for an LLC or to start generating leads through your marketing campaign, then I'm gonna choose a marketing campaign because it won't kill you to do a deal or two in your name. Normally just one deal will be a suffice. And then you can establish the LLC, you know, because you could get bogged down in those details and don't ever do anything. I'm all about taking action, start generating leads, turns into a deal, boom, establish the LLC, and you move on, for, you move forward from there. So, but it just depends. If you can afford to do both or whatever is not an issue as far as that type, that money, then yeah, just put the LLC in motion, but you're going to get that marketing going ASAP before you do anything. Get that phone ring. That's all it boils down to, guys. Talking to enough sellers going to turn into paydays. Okay. So, Sean Bright has a really good question. Well, all of your questions are good, but I keep saying that before each question because they just get better and better. So, we talked about the individuals who are in the areas, well, not necessarily rural, but have small populations. So, maybe, just maybe, they want to start their wholesaling journey in the next town, city over mm -hmm. or state. So, Sean Bright wants to know, how do you do out of town leads when you don't have anyone to represent you? Now I stop because you always talk about having boots on the ground. You got to have somebody right. in that area that can go look at houses, take pictures, visit, do your link ups, your whatever, whatever for mm -hmm. you. But what do you do when you don't have one? How do you find one? 
Well, I would probably start with trying to either um, build a relationship or network with a, a wholesaler in that market and or a real estate agent in that market that's investor minded. That's how I would do it. And just use the power of the Internet to do both. You know, wholesalers, they're going to advertise a lot on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, local Facebook groups, local LinkedIn groups, same thing with real estate agents. A lot of times you can just do the search on uh, properties that have sold cash. A lot of times those are investors. And if they were listed property, what agent was attached to them? So those agents may be in tune with our investor minded to work with you on the wholesale side of the game. So um, that's what I would do. All right. Now, Maine Jacobson from Kansas City, I think his name is Sam, actually. Hey, Sam. When calculating repairs, is it just me or the potential buyer opinion, meaning I may see repairs at 25K and a potential buyer may see 50,000 in repairs? Who's accurate? Now, you always say that can vary as well. What I say is 10,000. Somebody else could say, oh, no, that needs like. 80,000. It could vary tremendously. It could. Yeah. Right? But that could be a negotiating tactic also. But who's right? It, it, it's, you don't have to deal with them. Just like they don't have to deal with you. It's not who's right. It's just, you know, again, you know, if, if that numbers don't work, you're going to, man, if you get in this business, you you may think the deal is a smoking deal and, and you don't have anybody interested in it. And then you may have a deal that you just think is just okay and your phone rings off the hook. You know, your market is going to, if you're doing an effective job of letting people know your deal exists, your market is going to tell you quickly whether you have an opportunity or not or whatever. Sometimes you have to be a little bit more patient than others, but uh, who's right or who's wrong, that you can't just go by that. Now, if you got, if you send five buyers out there and all of them coming back saying, man, this problem, you said, how much it needs? And you said 25 and everybody at 40 to 50. And you're wrong. It's obvious you're wrong. Because they're not like they're meeting up and saying, hey, we're going to tell this guy for that 50000 You know what I'm saying? A lot of times they don't even know each other. So it's obvious you, you're you wrong in that position, in that situation. But it's just one buyer and you say 25, they say 50. Uh, you know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So El Haj Malik, I'm going to use you as my testimonial of the day. We're going to start having a testimonial each show. Yes, we are. I mentioned that, you know, I hadn't, that I hadn't heard from him, but I know he had been doing this. So he says, I'm just going to read it. Just one year ago, I was working at a temp job at Mannheim Auto Auction, working for $8.46 an hour. Just a little above minimum wage. I got serious about real estate, got my first deal in March Sorry. and made $46,000. Oh! Oh! Yes. yes. $46,000? Yes. No, you're not on my phone. Oh, wow. That's me. That's what I'm talking about. That's okay. what they do. So, and then he went from a temp job to closing four deals and getting paid six times off of real estate. He lives in Florida and he has a home now that he collects rent on. So he flipped it into a buy and hold and he's working on his seven. So talk it's about changing the whole game up. Thank you, El Hodge. You give us hope. He gives us hope. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, that that was the first deal of forty six grand. No, 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 that was not like one. But he's done, I think, a group because. Oh, that was a combination. That was yeah. a combination of deals. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and so how much he used to make on his gig? Eight forty six an hour. Ooh, that's that's a come up. That, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, education and consistency. He still work there. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> no. No. No, 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 no. Hey, man, hey. that's what's up, my man. Hey. Uh -huh. El Hodge, uh, can I work for you? Yeah, you uh <laughs> yeah, you want to share that story, man. You can you can uh just hit me up. You know how to reach me. I'll yes. put my number up here on the screen right now. So love it, love it. Now we did ask David uh some questions about POS, and he says Yes, a point of sale inspection is required on all properties, residential, commercial, and industrial. This is for some suburbs in the Chicago land area. Not all are the same. Some towns do not require a point of sales inspection. And Ty, please shout out my wife. Oh, I'm not, I'm gonna butcher it. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna say Nadij. 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 I'm gonna go with that. Hey, Nadej. Everybody say hey. Hey, Nadege. what's up, Nadej? <laughs> now we were talking about Cleveland, David, but I think that's I think that probably applies for both. We were talking about Cleveland and 
or the point of sale on the other one. Actually, the other guy hasn't never said Cleveland. You just said I think no, he about no, he put it in Cleveland. He did. Yeah, I read it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, uh, how you pronounce? I know you can't. We don't have an audio, but we're 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 assuming. Yes, Nad- so we got it Ma- right. Ma- Ma- Madiz. No, Nadiz, no, no. Nadiz. Yes. I think it's like Nadiz. Like Nadiz. Nadiz. So what's up, Nadiz? Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> yes, he said yes. He said yes, I got it right. Yay, I was uh, so good. Oh, uh, yeah. Boy, you can read. Boy, I'll top that up. Boy. An El Hodge Malik, I'm not going to say what he says, but you asked, does he still work there? And I absolutely love his response. It's on the screen. I quit. I quit that bit. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's what's up, man. Hey, you dropped the mic. Drop the mic. Hey, drop the mic on the I love it. I love it. Shut um, your mouth. Now, West Daily Flow on Instagram wants to know how the newbie can start wholesaling. Um. First. <laughs> what? What I'm gonna say? Um. Okay, first we're going to go with Binge Grind Stack. Okay, yeah. so dive in to over the 370 plus videos that are free for you to watch on YouTube. Um, tons of information there. I promise you if, you, if you search for the video that says top five mistakes, what is it, the one? Top five mistakes newbies should avoid yes. wholesaling to put Flip Man behind it in, in uh, YouTube. That's number one. Mm-hmm. The other video you want to watch is uh, zero. I just released this one. Zero to 10,000 wholesaling houses. Put Flip Man up behind that. Uh, but at the end of the day, you just want to educate yourself, man. This is this is really simple. I'm not saying it's easy. Educate yourself to give yourself the best chance to succeed by simply just knowing what to do. You know how... You know how far you are ahead of the game on trying to do anything by simply just knowing what to do. A lot of people want to cherry pick, like cherry pick, you know, my videos or whatever. And I get it, you know, because you want to make money right now. But if you don't have the patience to go through all of this content that's free, that can make you just an ungodly amount of money, you're probably not going to succeed in real estate anyway, because it takes a lot of patience. Right. It's that it's just that simple. Mm-hmm. It takes someone, I'm, I'm gonna say this as many times as I need be. It takes someone that wants to be a doctor, is it eight or twelve years? Twelve. Twelve years to be a physician, and they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to accomplish that. You could take three months out of your life, lock in on these videos here that are free and make more money than they make. Where else can you do that at? So watch the videos. Yeah, just come here on yourself. Thursdays. Join the Facebook groups. Not even just ours. Wholesaling real estate with the Flipman. Join any wholesaling. Just be mindful of the information and the knowledge that you're getting. Make sure it's accurate and correct. You're not being steered in the wrong direction. And then just get out there and try it. I mean, just just hustle up on it. And ETC ready to work. You said so. No more Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Please let me know or which Facebook page we're here. Even David that I was just speaking to, he's from Facebook. So I'm not sure. We're on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And Periscope. And Periscope. Whatever that is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Robin Taylor's on Facebook. And Robin Taylor just said, if you don't have the patience, this is not the business for you. That's what, Rob. That's up. What's up, Rob? Facts. Facts. Two words: education and consistency. You have to consistently educate yourself in this business. You have to be consistent. On oh, y'all heard what? Uh, what my name? Elijah. What is his name? El Haj Malik. Uh, El Haj Malik. Man, this man was making mm-hmm. less than nine dollars an hour, and over the course, I don't know what he said about the forty-six grand. You know how long it would have took him to make forty-six big ones? He did it in one year. And he says he's going to hit it heavy this year. He knows yeah. he can hit six figures. And and he said he helped his boy get his first deal at the end of that's, last year. That's so what I'm you talking pull about. somebody up with you. There's going to be it. somebody 
that's not going to believe that this can work, but there's going to be somebody that's going to want you to educate them. So educate others. And then we talk about the squad having a team, your boots on the ground. I can't answer all these calls. Hey, he got somebody that can help him and everybody's making money. So that's most definitely a great thing. Um, Tyrone says, my first deal was done with the title company in my area, which no longer does the double closings. Other than title companies, oh, it tapped out on me. I think he was asking, where else can you do to do, go to do your wholesale deal? So attorneys, some attorneys in some states can do them as well. Yeah, like Alabama is an attorney and title company state, but some states are not. You know, that's easy to find out, though. Okay. Uh, what's the platinum training? Oh, it was, a, it was a course. It was a package I put together. What about it? Oh, she wants to know when is the next one? Oh, uh, we got something coming. Okay. Probably. Probably. I don't know if it'd be exactly the same, but some coming. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, when the plat uh the coaching. Uh if you already if you're in it, you know, the next one is next Tuesday. The last one is next Tuesday, six weeks. It's Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's right. 2020 is often represents vision, and that's perfect vision. So our vision for real estate and wholesaling is clear for this year. Clear vision 2020 and 2020 is what we got. Oh yeah. Um Willie Lampkin wants to know, is there a website similar to Redfin that could provide value of mobile homes and trailers? Well, understand, guys, I get, I get a lot of questions about yeah, mobile I homes and trailers. trailers. Oh, my God. But easy. It ain't. I, I, I know that. You know what I'm saying? The reason that it's not is because it is difficult to come up with a value. They're, they're more like automobiles than houses if land is not included. They depreciate every day like an automobile whereas real estate generally speaking appreciates or whatever and so with a with a with a mobile home transaction action if land is not included or whatever they can sell that property without you they only need a bill of sale and, and them signing the title with a seller and a buyer so in most cases you're going to have to actually buy it first you make it set up some owner financing and then sell the owner financing or whatever that may give you some control or whatever, but as far as evaluating it, the best way to do it is get the manufacturer who meaning who built it. Um, the year was built, the size of the property, and you can call around to mobile home dealers throughout your area or state. And if they buy used mobile homes, just find out what will they pay for that particular mobile home with the information that you provide or whatever. And that's going to give you so now you have an idea what someone will pay for it. You call several of them, maybe get an idea then you'll know what you need to pay for it. But you still have to take in consideration whenever you're negotiating your deal. If it has to be moved, that can be seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000, depending on how far it has to go just to move that sucker. So, you know. All right. So, Ty. Go. Oh, it's me. That's you. I see a lot of people on here. It's the brand new year. Oh, first things it. first, huh? They're ready to get it. They're out. ready to get it. Like, get, get. <laughs> first things first. I see Quiverney Kiss thing on the screen. She's not here tonight, and she's normally here with us answering questions alongside with Ty. But as you see on your screen here, the beautiful Miss Renikia Wink Williams has a company called Funding Key Financials. What her company does is assist you with gap funding, transactional funding, also credit rehabilitation, possibly helping you rebuild it. Um, her requirements are that you have that 680 plus credit score. Um, but any questions that you have, I see some of you were asking about where can you go for gap funding or transactional funding, go to fund my new fund my next deal dot com. That's fund my next deal dot com and reach out to her there. Um, she's also available across all social media platforms. That's on Facebook, um, Instagram, and her email is funding at fkfinancials.com. So just because she's not here dropping her jewels on generational wealth, which you should leverage your credit to do, uh, make sure you reach out to her if that's something that it sounds like you're interested in as well. Now, everybody's asking, what are you doing new this year? And we're not going to go with any resolves or, you know, resolutions, anything like that. Talking about what am I doing now? Yeah, you got something new? Something oh, I got some. Try? I got something big time that's coming for you guys. It, it should be this month or whatever, but um, it's going to be a game changer. Just, just, just. Hang tight. Um, okay. Just so a game anything different you're going to try to do this year? More of something that you didn't do last year? Um. Let's say what now? Say, uh 
How about listening? Okay, so is there something this year that you're going to try to do more of that you didn't do last year? Oh, yeah, I'm going to focus a lot more on uh, multifamily, um, uh, just commercial in general, but definitely multifamily. Mm-hmm. And um, got a couple of tools that, you know, that's going to help me along with that. Mm-hmm. Started using one of them today. Mm-hmm. Can't share it with you yet, mm-hmm. uh, but it's coming or whatever. So, all right. All right. So, guys, it's about time for us to round out. Oh, oh, wait a minute. And Adria, those four deals I split with my pops. If I did the deals myself, that would have been over 100K. My fifth payment was a lease purchase I did on my property where I pocketed 16000 So his 46000 was actually splitting it with his pops. Oh, wow. That, that's what's oh. up. How, how, old, how old are you, my man? How old are you, L? He'll let us know. Okay. So with that, that being said, if you haven't noticed, again, I mentioned we pushed um, our time back 30 minutes. Um, we have quite a few of you viewing right now. If you could hit the like, subscribe now to the YouTube channel, follow at at Flipman on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, um, all of the above, TikTok. um, and TikTok, TikTok. Um, but make sure you hit the like button hearted. We appreciate you. We will be here next week for show number 125 and he's 31. Hey, okay. He's 31. Um, did you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. Make sure you're watching all of the videos that are available to you. Join that group, Wholesaling Real Estate with the Flipman. Educate yourself every single day. And next time we come on, I want to hear somebody's story about that deal they got on paper uh, or through email because, you know, you don't have to get papers actually signed. You got anything? Oh, no, that's it, God. It's 2020. You know, hey, boy, I love it. People just fired up the grand to go yes. or whatever. Hey, a lot, a lot of time is over. Marshmallow time is over. Oh, my thing. Nobody asked me what I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> Craig Lofton put standby. Let's get it. Yes, that's coming. Give me a minute. I can't believe they actually listened to that. Um, I said for myself, I think seven streams is what most investors or um, entrepreneur uh, mentorships suggest. I suggest five. So every one of us is going to come up with five streams of income by next week. And then we'll start putting in progress and plan. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Oh yeah. oh yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. So with that, that being said, we will see you guys next week. And on the flip side, so stand by. Flip man, flip man, it's the flip man, flip man, flip man. You want some money in your hand? Flipping houses without credit or your cash. Get that bag.